Hi, One Fam. It's awesome to have you join us again in a season where, like you, we are the extension of God's plan, light, and gift to our world. And I'm excited to welcome you to church. We have people tuning in from all over the world, and we'd we'll love to know where you're connecting from. So, Feel free to share your location with us in the comment section. If you are in Lagos, Abuja, Africa, or part of our global family in Europe or the Americas, just share it. You never know, you might just make a new friend today. As we start the service, get ready to have an amazing time in God's presence. We believe He has something special in store for you, and we encourage you to share your insights or blessings in the comment section throughout the service. We are always looking for ways to improve and serve you better. So if you have any feedback for us, please don't hesitate to share it. And if you're not already following us on all social media platforms, do hit the follow button now. Yes, like right now. You will be notified of all our upcoming services and events. Have you heard that after a test comes a testimony? So if you have one or more to share, we would love to hear it. Your story could inspire and encourage someone else today. There is love in sharing, so please be encouraged to share this experience with friends and family. Invite them to join the service too, so they can be blessed. You may want to say this with me. I am the light of the world. I shine and stand out in darkness. I am the salt of the earth. I have taste. I influence and impact my generation. I am as visible as a city set on a hill. Wow, that's God's plan for you. So prepare to disconnect from all distractions right now and immerse yourself in God's presence as we connect you to the main service. Thanks for joining us and I hope you have a blessed time with us. See you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Such an exciting moment to be here again with you this week for our midweek service. Hallelujah. I want to believe that God has been faithful, blessing you in every way you, you know, desired his touch, his goodness, his intervention in your life. And my prayer for you is that this season is going to be a remarkable one for you on every side in the name of Jesus Lord, prosper the works of your hands. The Lord, increase you, enlarge you, and announce you in the name of Jesus and cause you to be a blessing to the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Please do well to like the, uh, uh, hit the like button, comment uh, on the comment session, and share the link to as many as you can to the part of uh, midweek you know, service today. God bless you. Hallelujah. I just want us to um, take a moment to pray. We're going to just be blessing the name of the Lord. Just thank him with the fruit of your lips. Give him all the praise and glory. You know, just thank him for all that he's been to you. Bless the Lord, all my soul. Let everything that is within me bless his name. Hallelujah. The Lord has been so good. He's been so faithful. He's blessed my going out. And caused my coming in to be blessed also. It's caused everyone around me to experience his goodness. Hallelujah. And the radiating and the radiation of his glory. Hallelujah. Through me. Amen. Lord, I give you praise and glory. I thank you because everyone around me is blessed. I thank you because my family, the church, my friends and loved ones, the, my community is blessed. They are experiencing the supernatural impact of your power, even through me, even through us, even through us as believers. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the power and the boldness you have given us to even go out there, you know, and, you know, you know, create great impressions, you know, about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Carrying out the mandate of your kingdom without fail and without fear. Amen. With your spirit of excellence and of favor upon us. We we'll thank you because even our place of works, we are blessed in our families, we are blessed, you know, in our businesses, you know, for us men that are still studying, maybe in school, hallelujah, you've blessed us with 10 times wisdom than our contemporaries. Lord, we give you praise, oh God, because we are experiencing the fullness, the fullness of God all around us. So this season, 
all in apostolapaya. Everything that makes for good life and goodliness is ours. Amen. We walk upon our high places. Amen. Our lines are falling on pleasant places. We have goodly heritage in the name of Jesus. Lord, we we'll thank you. We just cannot thank you enough. We cannot thank you enough. Even if our bodies were full of mouth, it is not enough to give you thanks. But good God, from the depth of our hearts, we appreciate all that you are doing for us. We appreciate you even as a family in one church. This season, we're celebrating, you know, our sixth anniversary. It's been a journey, a journey of your faithfulness, a journey of your grace. We come with thanksgiving. We come with celebration. Hallelujah. Thanking you for your faithfulness are ah, in ama kushteliaka yembere de kufre talapaya e kushtele pana pasu kufarataya thank you because you've been good unto this great family you've been good unto us in every way ah in ayamashta we give you praise and glory hallelujah hallelujah i just want us to look at the book of second corinthians chapter 3 verses 18 i read quickly and it says but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of god we're going to be asking the lord today for a staring for a staring up you know of the graces he has deposited in us this season for a stirring up and awakening in our spirit. Open your mouth right now and begin to ask the Lord, Lord, stir me up. Awaken me. In Awaken me. Let there be a stirring in my spirit. In Prataka. Every gift that have been suppressed in me, they will come alive. In the name of Jesus, by the Spirit of the Living God, we exercise all these godly attributes, all the attributes of Jesus Christ in us. He says, But we all with open face, beholding us in a glass. The glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image that we will begin to express uh, the very life of God. We we'll begin to express the very life of Jesus everywhere we go. Uh, the Bible speaks in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38. It says how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good. As we are killing as we are stirred up in us in in in, 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 um, in, uh, uh, in what in our spirit, the gifts and the graces deposited in us by God, we are stirred up to do like Jesus did, going about doing good because we've, we all have been anointed. Strengthening us to carry out the work, strengthening us to do like Jesus, strengthening us to live the life of God indeed, to express the wisdom of God, to express the power of God, to express you know, you know, the knowledge of God in the name of Jesus. Stir up, stir us up, O oh God. Let there be an awakening in us, O oh Lord. An awakening in us. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise and glory. We exalt your name. Quicken even our mortal bodies. Quicken even our mortal bodies. Ekate paranaku feteke branishta. Every minute, every moment, with there's something remarkable happening in us, we are transformed. You know, we we are, we are, we are re-energized. We are revitalized. There is this new, there's this new spicing about our passion for the kingdom in the name of Jesus. A new spicing for the passion of the kingdom. A passion for the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, oh God, because this joy we have found will not lose it. Because this love we have found will not lose it in the name of Jesus. Mande Hallelujah. The Bible speaks in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, 
should not perish but have everlasting life we're going to be asking the lord thank you for the gift of jesus amen thank you for the gift of jesus as an evidence of your love towards us thank you for giving us jesus as an evidence of your love towards us this season the season of love it's a season where we just have to, you know, express the love of God. Amen. It's a season of love, expressing the love of God, the one who first loved us. And that was why we prayed, saying that, that the Lord will help us to begin to live the life that, you know, he's designed for us to live. Amen. Reciprocating back to him the love that he has shown to us. Amen. And we on earth here are, uh, ought to be an expression of God's love. To the dying world out there so just open up your mouth we need to thank the lord for sending his son to die for us for the gift of jesus christ unto us Lord, we thank you, O God. We thank you, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, we thank you for the death upon the cross of Calvary that has delivered us from darkness and has brought us into your marvelous light wherein we, wherein we, we, we uh, thrive, wherein we, we, we are glorified, wherein we are blessed ikate parada shataba we're going to be asking the Lord help us to diffuse this love help us to spread this love in every way oh God possible in every way possible and necessary we find the boldness we find the strength we find that opportunity to express your love in the name of Jesus Lord we give you praise oh God because we are empowered to do your will we are empowered to express your love and your wisdom everywhere we go causing your light to shine and causing your light to shine to the world in the name of Jesus for God is love even our God is love himself what a what a God indeed, what a Father indeed. Lord, we thank you. We exalt you. We are where we are today, even doing your, your, your will and living for you because of your love. The most potent power anyone can think of is the love of God. Thank you for the privilege given us to enjoy this love and to also, you know, be vessels to spread this love abroad. We give you praise. We exalt you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. At this moment, um, we'll just uh, join the worship session as one sound will take us to the throne of grace through worship. Please, afterwards, we'll come back to Feast on the Word. Stay tuned. God bless you. Thank you. 
like Makatum Celebrataya, a Kelemongo Parana Shata, a Mingo Possini Brana Kayaba, Arima Neko Salanashta, a Sosorita Mingo Possilibia. Lord, we worship you, O oh God. We worship you, Jesus. There is no one like you. There's no one like you. Jesus, yeah, yeah. There's no one like you. Oh, in all the earth. There's no one like you. Jesus, Jesus, we bow before you, Lord. There's no one like you. There's no one like you, no one like you, Jesus. Jesus. We are nothing without There's you. No one like you in no the
Hi everyone, great to have you here on such a special day. Welcome to yet another midweek event here at One Church. I trust that it's been a good day so far. All right, so welcome. Uh, you're probably on your way from work, maybe driving in traffic, maybe at work, maybe you work remotely. Uh, basically, let me know where you're watching from, amen, uh, who you are, uh, what country, amen, if you're in traffic, uh, let's know, please don't watch, rather I'd say listen, uh, but then again, get the family around the table, yeah, get friends, like I always ask that favor for you and I, let us uh, post on our social media the, you know, uh, the link for this service, uh, it will help someone watch it, maybe now, it could be later, bottom line is that it will be a blessing to them all right so welcome 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 uh to this event uh, i'm praying like i always do that the rest of the week for you will be the best of the week in jesus name if you believe that say a big 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 amen all right god bless i want to talk this evening about a uh, subject I consider very important. Uh, this year, you know, uh, veered around, you know, your ability to hear the Holy Spirit, um, you know, your ability to, you know, discern God's will um, and walk in that will, you know, it's, it's really all about direction and receiving direction and ensuring that you start out the year on the right path. I like saying uh, there's no point you know, climbing up a ladder if it's leaning against the wrong building. And what may be most important for us as believers in this season is accuracy. Yeah, it's, it's just that sense that you are right in the heart of God's will. You may not even see immediate results. Or you may be able to see, you may begin to see some results in June and July and, you know, August and all of that. But it's very, very, very important that you 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 walk into those months amen with confidence with a confident assurance that you are in the will of god all right so i want to talk to us about the things that may hinder our prayers or the things that may hinder us in prayer all right things that will hinder effective prayer i think very important so we can also get those things um out of the way we'll use a very well-known text james chapter 5 and verse 16 james chapter 5 and verse 16 all right james chapter 5 and verse 16 it says confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Amen. I want to paraphrase that and say, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man will go a long way. Amen. It's a big deal. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man will actually go a long way. It will go a long way. Yeah. And, and I find it interesting that the Bible talks about, you know, or emphasizes this point right after encouraging us to confess our faults one to another. In fact, uh, if you read a previous, it talks about is, you know, is any merry, let him rejoice. Um, is any sick, let him, you know, call for the others of the church, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. It says that the prayer of faith will heal the sick. You know, if uh, the Lord will lift him up, if he's committed sins, he'll be forgiven um, and all of that. Uh, and then it then says to confess your faults um, one to another that you may be healed. And then the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. First point for me is that healing is within. I must say that, yeah, healing is within. Yeah, and, and the point here is that there may be some, um, you know, there may be some things in the way uh, of our prayers being answered that are internal. You know, every time we talk about the external things, you know, people, and, and this this maybe is what you want to hear sometimes. You know, maybe it's an uncle somewhere, an auntie somewhere, someone who hates you. You know, we quote scriptures like, uh, he'll, he'll uh, prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies and things like that. You know, um, it's, it's always easier to attribute 
the problem to external faculties, uh, external situations and circumstances. And what it largely does is, you know, absorb, absorb us of any responsibility. All right. But the Bible is saying here that sometimes you need to look within. So, uh, 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 unresolved issues. Yeah. Unresolved issues, um, could be a hindrance to prayer. And it's very important. You know, David said, Lord, search me, check my heart, you know, see if there's any hindrance or any, you know, any wickedness uh, in me. And, and it's good that we also check our hearts and check the state of our hearts. The word fault there uh, is essentially your, you know, mistakes, your vulnerabilities, you know, where you feel like something may be the issue. For many, it's habits, you know, habits, maybe, maybe habits that just keep messing up your prayer life, habits that um, keep bringing guilt on you, you know, a sense of condemnation, habits that almost make your previous prayer effort look like a wasted uh, effort. You know, I was sharing the other day um, about the fact that the devil is very strategic and deliberate. It's important as a believer that you know yourself, that you know what, what your weaknesses are. And this is the word fault here. Um, you know, beyond setting goals, even go further to set boundaries. What are the things that are going to keep you from falling into those traps that you fall into previously? What are the things that will keep you from falling back into them? Yeah, because, because things like unresolved sin and unresolved, you know, faults, deficiencies, you know, um, go a long way to hinder your prayers. Yeah, and, and part of accountability is putting in deliberate uh, uh, boundaries, you know, things that will keep you from going back into those places. I like saying that what the mind cannot handle, it will pass it to the body. Yeah, and so some of these things even manifest in uh, physical sickness, you know, where you're just, I mean, you're just so down in the dumps from the bottom of your heart, you know, and these things manifest in physical uh, sickness. It, it's, it's really important that I highlight this because many of the issues are internal. Uh, it, it could even be the weight or pressure, you know, of something somebody has said, um, you know, the words of men, you know, uh, undue expectation placed on you, you know, that pressure to perform. It could be just so many things and so many pressures, even, even, even just the worry and the anxiety about around your prayer point could go a long way um, to, to, you know, hindering your prayers. But the, the Greek word faults there, it's a side slip, you know, usually a lapse in, you know, judgment or decision, a deviation, um, you know, it could be unintentional error, it could be willful transgression, uh, the, 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 the church exists, amen, as a family where people can look each other in the eye. And I love the word it says one to another because that is a face to face thing, you know, where people can look each other in the eye and ask for help. Yeah, very important. They say revealing your feelings is the beginning of healing. Revealing your feelings is the beginning of of healing and once you reveal those feelings um, you've you've broken the hold of the devil you know over some part of your life you've you've rendered his threat useless yeah because secrecy is actually the power of sin i'll say that again secrecy is what empowers sin you know the sense that uh, you are the only one who knows about it. You know, there's no point. Don't tell anybody. Just keep this to yourself. And all of those things, um, you know, that get whispered to you, uh, those things go a long way. I'm, I'm, I'm highlighting this because it's important. Also because we're at the start of a, the year, effectively. I mean, it's about six weeks gone now. Um, and you, you need to clear those roadblocks because they will go with you in the rest of the year if you keep them there. God told Abraham to leave his family and leave his friends, you know, leave everything that he knew as life and go to a place that he would show him. But the Bible says Lot went with him. 
and some things tend to want to go with us all right when um, god wants to take us to a new place and it's important that you're able to cut off those attachments those lots as it were uh, and move forward into the glorious destiny that god has for you and i'm praying for someone this uh, evening that the the weight of guilt over your life will be lifted in the name of jesus amen that uh, um, the weight of you know undue expectations you know the spirit of condemnation that the devil may be using to play tricks on you those things will be lifted in the mighty name of jesus all right uh, things also like unforgiveness you know things like offense things like r regret yeah regret regret is so rooted in the past that there's no point leaning into it other than for learning yeah uh, the, the only reason why you should reflect is to learn not to regret it's just such a huge waste of emotional energy that energy and, and even spiritual energy amen it's, it's such a huge reinforcement of failure you know and you don't need that um, in your life so things like uh, staying in offense or unforgiveness is kind of like you know trying to drive forward but looking in your reverse mirror there's no going forward that way you're just going to crash yeah to go forward you look forward and I'm encouraging someone, whatever it is that, you know, may be keeping you from looking forward, that you resolve it uh, and God will help you. Unforgiveness and offense, they are simply traps. In Luke 17 from verses 1 to 5, Jesus said, um, It's impossible but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones take heed to yourselves if your brother trespass against you rebuke him if he repents forgive him if he trespass against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day he turns against again to you saying i repent you will forgive him and the apostles <laughs> said unto the lord increase our faith amen give us more faith let, let me encourage you to to have latitude for forgiveness you know just be very open be very quick to forgive it helps you unforgiveness i've said this before it's like or forgiveness it's like releasing the prisoner only to realize it was you so unforgiveness is like keeping the prisoner not realizing it is you unforgiveness does you no good yeah someone offended you you say oh you know i'm not going to forgive them you're keeping you're holding them in your heart and things like that now nah. let it go amen let it go yeah they said increase our faith and and the word um uh, offense here is is basically hindrance someone standing in your way someone standing in the way of what god wants to do in your life that's what the bible terms here as offenses it's it's impossible but that hindrances will come yeah anyone who offends you whether willingly or knowingly is an attempt of the devil to hinder something god wants to do in your life and i see it as distraction in the spirit where you are then focused on what that person did how it made you feel and you're so focused on those things that you lose sight of where god is taking you to something i often say is that if you stop to throw stones at every dog that barks you will never get to where you're going yeah so see it like that be very light-hearted someone offends you let it go you know i like saying offense is like mud it will clean off better if you give it time don't 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 react harshly and stuff like that just let it go amen move on um uh, bless god you know thank him pray for the person you know where it applies yeah and and let god he said vengeance is mine let god deal with um uh, those kinds of things so it's generally a snare or a bait um or a um trap hallelujah uh, mark 11 you see verse uh, 24 and 25 i think it reinforces the point therefore i say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them 
And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father, uh, also which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. And the point here, I mean, for, for the Bible to mention this in the middle of a prayer text, you know, I think it only shows that it is relevant. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be there. Yeah, if you stand praying, forgive. Yeah, if you have ought against any. Yeah, forgive. So it, it may be that one of the things you say consciously is that you release everyone that you may hold something against. And let me highlight again, or let me also emphasize the point or the fact that forgiveness is first a conscious choice. A lot of us are waiting to, you know, feel better before we forgive. It may take a while. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, so there are times you've forgiven as a conscious decision, um, even though you still fa feel bad about the situation. And that's fine. All right? That's fine. Ask God uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit to give you joy in your heart to overcome that. Yeah, you can deal with that by the side, but make sure you've, you've forgiven consciously. Um, you know, it, it will directly impact your prayer. It says in Mark, Matthew 5, if you see verse 23, 24, therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and right there, you remember that your brother has something against you. It says, leave your gift there uh, and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. It's the same thing. It's coming up um, again. I, I want to also raise another uh, thought, which is around the subject of fear. Yeah, fear and doubt. And I want you to write this down. Every hold that fear has over you is actually with your permission. Amen. Every hold that fear has over you is actually with your permission. Every hold that fear has over you <clears throat> is your permission. Job 3 verse 25, For the thing that I greatly feared is come upon me, and the thing that I was afraid of is come unto me. Uh, fear is an attractive force. Fear attracts. Yeah? Fear is attractive. Very attractive. Fear is attractive. It is very attractive. Amen. Fear is very attractive. I want you to think about that. Fear is very attractive. It is very attractive. The thing that I greatly feared, it has come upon me. You essentially attract the object of your fear. Um, every fear is learned. Every, every, every child is only born with two fears, the fear of heights and the fear of sudden loud noises. That's it. Every other fear. That's why you see a child. I mean, I was watching a video some days ago. A child saw a snake outside and picked it by the tail and dragged it into the house. And the mother was running around and, you know, was, the child was trying to, was wondering what the problem is. You know, and he would pick up the snake again and drag it to another part of the house. <laughs> you know, and the mother was just screaming. That child was clueless. That's why when Jesus was talking about faith, he, he, he recommended to us to have the faith of a child. <laughs> because it, it takes childlike faith to break through uh, in the place of the Spirit. And what is childlike faith? It's that faith that just takes God by His Word. It's as simple as that. When you tell your, your uh, family, you know, you're going to, uh, uh, you know, where everybody, we're all, going, we're all going abroad this year. Or your kids, your little kids. You know, the people that doubt you, I want you to think about it. The people that doubt you are essentially the people that have history with you. <laughs> so your, 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 your wife could doubt that because she has some insight into your finances. You know, but your child has no issues. They just want to, yeah, bless God, we're traveling. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, every fear is learned. You can unlearn your fears by replacing them with the word of God. So identify your fears. Yeah, as you find yourself anxious around certain areas, articulate those fears. Yeah, and find a word in scripture to replace those fears. Yeah, I'll give an example. You are, you are afraid about, uh, let me look for this. You're afraid about, uh, you know, maybe not getting married or something, you know, and every now and then maybe you go to a friend's place 
uh, or you go to your friend's wedding, you know, you start to worry, oh, will I ever get married? <coughs> Amen. You, you, you articulate that fear and you take something like Isaiah 30, uh, 32, it is Isaiah 32 and verse 16. It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Um, no one shall be missing. None shall want her mate. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it and his spirit has gathered it. And you're saying, you know, I'm not going to lack my mate. You are, you are countering that fear and anxiety because fear and anxiety actually also preach their own sermon to you. And they are essentially words that the devil is trying to plant in your heart as seeds. And what you need to do is uproot those seeds by taking God's word, amen, and, and planting them um, in that same place. Every fear is learned. You can un unlearn those fears by replacing them with the word of God. If you look, James 1 uh, verses 5 to 8, it says, If any lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives liberally and upbraids not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. Excuse me. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You can't have fear and faith in the same heart. You can't have fear and faith operating in the same place. James, uh, sorry, uh, J Hebrews, forgive me, chapter 4, um, the, the second verse talks about, you know, the, 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 the word that we heard was the same word that they heard, you know, but the word that they heard did not profit them because it did not meet faith in their hearts when it got there. All right? So, uh, deal with your fears. Deal with your fears. I, I would mention also, you know, for couples, family discord, uh, you know, you're not, you and your wife, you know, in a really bad place. Uh, there's, you know, maybe malice, um, you know, anything. It's, it's very important that in the family, and, and the devil attacks families, and you see that a lot, amen, around. The devil is attacking aggressively families on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. Yeah, that is, that is a representation of the church. He says, love your wives as Christ loved the church that he gave his life for it. I mean, family is a representation of sacrifice, the kind of sacrifice that Jesus Christ subscribes to. Yeah, 1 Peter 3, uh, verses 6 to 7, it says, Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are, as long as you do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Verse 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Amen. That your prayers be not hindered. Praise God. That your prayers be not hindered. The word hinder again there, it's, it's like, you know, blocking off a road. Exactly. It's like a roadblock. Yeah. Introducing an object that stands sharply in the way of a moving object. So God is trying to do something you know, in your life. If the devil can't get you through fear, if he can't get you through unresolved sin, he can get you through the family. Yeah? And and, and enter through that um, uh, link or come in through the family and begin to disrupt things, again, spiritual distraction, um, and ultimately he wins. When you choose to stay in malice, you know, you know, stay, you know, you want to be abusive to your wife, you know, any of those types of, of, of things. Uh, this is pretty obvious, but you must be aligned with the will of God. God only pays for what he ordered. I like saying that. You know, a lot of us want, a lot of us have predetermined what we want to do or what we want. And then we, uh, then just ask God to rubber stamp it. And God isn't going to do that. It's not going to do that. Look at 1 John 5. If you see verses 14 to 15. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just begin to round up. It says, this is the 
if you're really thinking, James, this, this is the um, confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us what things soever we ask, then we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. Now look at it in 1 John 5, uh, verses 14 to 15 in the Amplified. It says, this is the remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to, to have before him. That if we ask according to his will, that is, consistent with his plan and purpose, he hears us. Now that's important. Consistent with his plan and purpose. And if we know for a fact, as indeed we do, that he hears and listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know, all right, with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted to us the request which we have asked from him. Think about that. If we know that he hears us. So, of course, there's that knowledge that God listens to his children. But there must be also that knowledge that what you are asking is consistent with his plan and purpose. You therefore must know his plan and purpose. In fact, prayer must issue out of the will of God. It, it can't be outside of that. Yeah, Prayer must issue from the place of knowing God's will uh, concerning you. So it's important that you learn to search out God's mind on the most critical issues of your life. It's very important that you learn to search out God's mind on the most critical issues of your life. All right, uh, disobedience is is you know it's an obvious reason why your prayers may be um, unanswered. I mean, when you when you know that you are blatantly going against God's will or God's instruction, how you how you hope to have that prayer answered, I don't know. Yeah, and there are, I mean, there are things we've done, we clearly knew this was not God's will. So you need to clear up that kind of stuff. You know, uh, it was Samuel had that same, First Samuel 15, she did the 22nd verse, Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Amen. To obey is better than sacrifice. To hearken is better than the fat of rams. I'll say it again. To obey is better than sacrifice. To hearken is better than the fat of rams. To obey is better than sacrifice. To hearken is better than the fat of rams. And let me let me let me say, look, never use prayer to evade responsibility. Yeah, where where you know that you are you are clearly outside of god's will yeah uh and then you're still praying about that <laughs> it's just it's just all messed up yeah never use prayer to a lot of us now are praying to get us out of trouble that we with open eyes went into yeah and sometimes you just need to own that um Find a responsible path for getting out of it um, and believe God. Amen. Um, I'll round up with this. Wrong or selfish motives also will put you in a bad place um, in prayer. Wrong or selfish motives. So please ask your question. These things I'm believing God for. Why am I believing God for them? Amen. Why am I believing God for these things that I'm believing God for? Why am I believing God for them? It's a very important question. Why am I believing God for these things that I am believing him for? Why am I believing God for these things that I am believing God for? Look at James 4 verses 1 uh, to 3. It says, From whence comes, come wars and fightings amongst you? In other words, you know, how do wars start? It says, don't they come... Or come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members. In other words, there's behind every word there's some sort of selfish desire. Somebody wants something that somebody owns, you know, somebody wants to take something from someone, two people just refuse to agree, you know, those types of things. Think, think about it. Any any sort of war, there's usually at least one side, you know, that 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 is not 
that is that is wanting something that is not theirs. Yeah, or or refusing or failing to agree at the table of agreement. Uh, it says you lost and you have not. In other words, you desire some things but you don't have them. You kill, you desire to have, and you cannot obtain. You fight and you war, yet you have not. Uh, one reason also is because you don't ask. Amen. You don't ask. How, how, how does God answer what you don't even ask? Yet yeah, you don't ask. Okay, you also ask, you don't receive. Why? Because you're asking wrongly. You're asking amiss. To what end? That you may consume it upon your loss. All right? If this is about your will, if this is about your desires, if this is about what you want, not what God wants, it's, it's very, very important that you address that and redress that. Amen. And come out of that place. You know, you must be where Jesus was, where he said. And this, is, this was his own will. He says, Lord, um, you know, if it's possible, let this cup pass over me. Let me find the uh, uh, scripture. You know, let this cup, uh, you know, pass over me. This was in Matthew 26 verse 39 yeah but then he checked that immediately he says however not my will amen that must be your attitude in prayer that must be your attitude to prayer that must be your attitude in asking not my will not my will amen anything you come to god for where he knows that your ultimate goal is to glorify his kingdom god will always be attentive to. Amen. So your motives will be wrong or will be selfish. It may be about impressing someone or proving to someone that you have, you know, you, you, you need to be mature enough to throw off all those types of pressures. And move forward in the will of God. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And I, I do hope that this has been a blessing to someone um, this, you know, this, this afternoon. Uh, sorry, this evening. I hope it's been a blessing to someone that, that you check those things, you know, you're able to take them off and, and ensure that you are in order along all those lines. Yeah. I believe for, for anyone blessed by this, that you will see immediate correction and immediate uh, uh, present results, amen, in your prayer life. Hallelujah. Praise God. I hope you've been blessed. Please do not forget. I want you to please, please, please get this word out. All right. Share it with someone. Put it on your post. Do any of that um, and, and let it be a blessing to someone. Your prayers will not go unanswered this year in the name of Jesus the desires that God has put in your heart, your hands will hold those same desires to the glory of his name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. Uh, thank you for my brothers, sisters, you know, listening here uh, today, even those who will listen later. I pray, Lord, that the same grace that we have experienced will find expression in their lives in the name of Jesus. For everyone, Lord, who is out of order, in the place of prayer. I pray that by the Holy Spirit, you are able to help them pinpoint what the issues are and also give them the courage, the grace, the strength, amen, to, to, to fix those in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said a big amen. Praise God. All right. So uh, thank you again for your time. Uh, before we close, I want to... Um, Invite you to join us this Sunday for our sixth anniversary celebrations uh, here at One Church. We will be six. Amen. I want you to come um, and be a blessing. Just join us. Let's enjoy the time together. We'll have Minister Dari justified with us in both of our services. I promise you it will be a swell time in God's presence. So please look forward to um, uh, to that and we look forward to receiving you and being a blessing to you also so we, we want to give to god presently um can i ask that you please um you know use the details on the screen 
thank you for your tithing. Thank you for your giving towards our uh, uh, property project, Nehemiah. Thank you for your offering. Amen. I pray that God blesses all of that. Amen. To the glory of his name. Thank you, Father, for every giver under, my, under the sound of my voice today. They will not go unrewarded in the mighty name of Jesus. Big God bless you. Thank you. Amen. I welcome our guests who are here with us for the first time, and then we'll close the service. We are not unconscious of your presence. We believe that God sent you to us today as a gift. We ask that you help us receive you as such. So please signify in the comment section that it's your first time. Hallelujah. Let's welcome our friends who are here for the first time. God bless you. Please use the link in the comment section. We want you to um, fill out the form that it leads you to. Amen. Fill out the form that it leads you to um, and let us, uh, you know, get the opportunity to reach out to you to say thank you for coming and just you know, get your feedback, answer your questions. And we look forward to seeing you again and again, even at our physical experience, as soon as you can make it. Big God bless you. Thank you so, so, so much. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, everyone. We close our meetings by taking our closing charge from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 18. We do then 20 to 23. You should have it on the screen. Let's do it together. It says, my path is as the shining light. It's shining ever brighter onto the perfect day. This week, I pay attention to God's word. I incline my ears to his saying. His words don't depart from my eyes. I keep them in my heart. For his words are life to me and health to my body. This week, I guard my heart with all diligence. For everything I do flows from it. Amen. Big God bless you. Thank you so much for your time. I'll see you next week. Many years ago, around 2018 AD, a light shone bright in Shangotedo, and a church was born. The pillars of the church were created by spirit-filled people inspired by the Holy Spirit. They are one sound. to win souls through spirit-filled songs and ministrations. One media to bring the imagination of the church to life on the big screen. Ushering protocol, hospitality and traffic at the front-facing units. They ensure orderliness in and out of service, making members and guests comfortable. Membership team helps new members in one church to know more about us, especially what makes us family. Maturity team helps to continue the process of spiritual growth as you strive to reflect the nature of Jesus Christ in every area of your life. The prayer unit upholds the congregation and the community in prayer. This year, One Church has reached out to even more people to continue to grow as one family through the Life Group program with eight different locations across the city. We are growing smaller to grow bigger. The church has encouraged the growth of both genders by setting up a men's ministry known as King's Men and a women's ministry known as One Woman's Network. But its message isn't just for adults. The junior church and the teen's church ensure that our future is being nurtured the right way God intended. So why would you stick around one church? Because we care for our family. We want them to grow in all areas of their life with the best kind of foundation there is, the foundation of Christ. We invite you to join our services Sundays, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., both online and on-site. First-timers can pick up a welcome pack at the hospitality stand in exchange for the guest card received during service. Also, join us on Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m., online, showing on all our social media platforms. Do come along with a friend. We have a surprise for you. See you soon.